bushy-tailed pests. It's driven squirrels in modern gamekeeper. One like Scott, that. Our air gun reviewer Jamie Chandler has a new air gun to review, the BSA Defiant, and he's defiantly shooting farmyard pests with it. We have news, we have hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Squirrels have had some excellent PR advice. Give the public adorable, clever, cute on the bird tables of the UK and you can literally get away with murder. And that's just what they do, especially at this time of year. So Paul is with Scott and they're hitting a couple of the woods. It's a lovely day to be out, but if you're going to go and ambush a few squirrels, it's quite good if they're um, in their drays. And a wet, windy day, they'll all be in the drays. They'll but today, it's a nice sunny day, they'll be out. And you'll see them on top of, the, on top of these uh, trees, and they'll be like sunbathing. But it's all right, we'll shoot a few around these hoppers. We've put out a few uh, feeders half of the season for the pheasants, um, keep them keeping the areas. And um, basically what happens is you get lots of squirrels there. So it's a good way to control the squirrels. Go to the area where you've been feeding the pheasants. We get a few guys in shooting them with the, with the rifles as well. But when they're skittish, we go in there with Hot Shot Scott and myself and um, ambush them. Try and shoot a few around there and uh, yeah, it's another way of stopping them from destroying the game crops like last year and splitting all the water pipes. So, let's going to have some fun. Let's go wipe his eye. <laughs> oh yeah, because you're a hot shot. It takes a few drays before we get lucky. See him? Inspect the quarry. Big pregnant female. Yep. Seems a shame, but they cause devastation, don't they? So. Hey. Hey. I did. I tried to hit the trees to make him flush him out. Didn't work, did it? Another one. Another pregnant female. Oh, it's not. It's one like Scott, look. <laughs> that reminds me of Scott, it's the size of them. <laughs> Paul is firing a lot of shells into sticks and leaves but he still sees it as value for money. All that effort so far on all those cartridges, we've got two squirrels. One, we've probably had half a dozen babies, as well as that's like seven squirrels. So basically got eight squirrels in theory. But last year, a dry, really dry summer, and uh, the squirrels are going to the pheasant pens and hammering the, the blue alkaline pipe for the drinkers. It's not just the piping, it's when they do it and you've got medication in the water and then you've got pulps, you know, they might drain the pipe down during the day, time you come back there in the evening, you've got pulps like water. So it's, 
not just holes in water piping, put up with that, but it's sort of everything else. And then obviously they got the forestry side, they ring bark in the got plantation over the back there, they've got a lot of uh, oak trees and uh, ring bark and the uh, young oaks devastated the whole plantation basically. Yeah, so each squirrel is really important. Paul's not just assessing the drays, he's looking for other signs that indicate fresh use of that dray. He's confident about this one. So you can normally tell the drays that are being used or the trees that are being used because the marks you see at the bottom of the tree, got some scratch marks going up where they're using the tree. Same as you see uh, any sort of like animal runs basically, whether it's deer or rabbits or, or rats. At the top of the dray here, got a lot of markings where they're scratching the uh, bark and manoeuvring up and around the tree. The reason why, <laughs> the other reason why it's quite good with you two of you doing it because you flush a squirrel out the dray and the squirrel will come out and obviously you use the tree as its, its cover and it basically as you walk around the tree, if you're on your own, you walk around the tree trying to get it and it'll keep manoeuvring around the tree. So if you've got two of you, one on each side, one of you can spot it and, and uh, shoot it. That's the plan. You were right. I was right. On the money. All right in the head, headshot. Another female. Paul has a multi-shot Remington semi-auto and Scott has the pump action. Sometimes the shots come thick and fast. Three shots, three to one. He's a slippery little customer, that one. These boys didn't even notice it. That's the that's that's uh, more important thing. Squirrel run up a tree, they couldn't even see it. Maybe not the most cost-effective squirrels we've ever got, but at least they won't be eating any more alkaline pipe, boys. Two females, good ones to get. Got help right there, sir. Yeah, yeah, got to get them down, David. As Paul says, we need them down, so what sort of shells should you be using? Well, we have Andy's Game Ball Clear Pigeon 32 gram sixes. They're potent enough to penetrate the drays and either kill them inside or push them into a clearer shooting opportunity. Here we've got Clear Pigeon, which is obviously Andy's uh, cartridge. It's a good, reasonably priced cartridge, doing a lot of pigeon shooting, getting through a lot of rounds. It's a good way of, a good efficient way of doing the job. They still kill well, but not as heavily priced <laughs> as the, the, the George Digweed cartridges. Um, I actually really do like these, but it's not a cost effective way of, of blowing out drays and, and shooting a lot of vermin. Um, cracking uh, pattern and killing power. You see the two different there, you see the different size pellets inside. So about where you put it and shoot it at a sensible distance. Um, but that's also why we have the auto, so we've got plenty of firepower. Obviously when you're shooting the autos, you're pumping out cartridges out the side, empty cartridges, so again, it's a thing to instill in your brain to bang, 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 pick, pick, pick. Um, otherwise, you've got cartridge everywhere. Obviously, after the shoot days, we pick up all the cartridges, so no different than when you're out, out and about doing vermin control. If you have a preferred squirrel cartridge size, let us know in the comments below. On the way back to the truck, Paul wants to show us the piping that needs to be binned. Nibbling through the pipe, there, there. You see where one of the lads repaired it. We've run out of fittings. Down here, another repair. You know, it's basically it's quite rubbish, you know? They are a serious pest, really, you know, with, with um, eggs, fledglings, like small. Um, we had it in the garden last year. Um, we had a, a nest of blue tits. We had a starling come and take the youngsters, squirrel come and take the youngsters, and a uh, woodpecker come and take the youngsters. All from the same nest. Yeah. So, but yeah, actually the squirrel went in the top and killed them all. <laughs> right. So, a reasonably successful morning, and we hope a few more songbirds might make it out of the nest. 
In the meantime, across the country, garden-dwelling squirrels with their fluffy tap dancing will be entertaining the masses before having blue tits for breakfast. Now a man who proves there is smoke without fire. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Swedish police have released incredible footage which shows the moment a Swedish hunter shoots a pensioner. The 48-year-old Norwegian hunter, who's not been named, claims that he thought he was about to shoot a deer, but instead he ended up shooting 75-year-old Ole Rosdal. Incredibly, the bullet passed through Rosdal and missed his vital organs. The Norwegian hunter maintains it was an accident. He has been charged with attempted murder. An anti-badger culling organisation has recommended its supporters wreck game farms. The UK-based Stop the Cull organisation posted a map on Facebook of game farms around the country and advice to members to visit them in the middle of the night. Facebook endorses this call to criminal damage and says the post is not against their community standards. Sir David Attenborough has joined the campaign to save wild salmon. The, salmon the noted naturalist and BBC TV presenter is backing a campaign by Salmon and Trout Conservation Scotland with a new video to mark International Year of the Salmon. Yet. It includes an attack on salmon farms and is made by keen hunting YouTubers, the Pace Brothers. There's a link to the film in the description below. Beavers have better representation in the Scottish Parliament than most native species, including deer. Scottish Green Party MSP John Finney announces that he will represent Scotland's beavers in Holyrood. He is pictured here with Bruce the beaver, a cuddly version of the real animal, which, if unchecked, can have huge environmental impact. A new type of satellite tag for tracking birds of prey is being trialled in the Cairngorms in Scotland. Over the next 18 months, some young golden eagles will be fitted with the raptor tracker, which aims to provide better information on the bird's movements, including an instant fix on any eagle that dies. Shooting groups welcome the move, which they believe will exonerate them from exaggerated claims that they kill eagles. However, shooters are still concerned about the lack of accountability of those involved in raptor monitoring and the disturbance they cause at nest sites, including killing an osprey chick in an incident in 2018. A few weeks ago, we covered the issue of Lyme disease with Tim Pilbeam, but it's not just Lyme. Ticks cause other diseases too. A viewer sends us an article which claims 154 people have been admitted to hospital in Austria with the viral infection FSME, also called early summer meningococcal encephalitis, caused by tick bites. The parasite is believed to have arrived in Austria on migratory birds. A Welsh pheasant shoot is to close after pressure from antiques. Pheasant shooting will not take place in the coming season at Guggenhoek Hall in Newton, Paris, which is run by shoot operator Bettis Hall. The site, owned by the University of Wales, has been subject to a campaign by the League Against Cruel Sports. Two countryside shows took place last weekend, showing the popularity of these small niche events. The London Fly Fishing Fair held in Islington attracted fly fishers from across the capital to be tempted by major brands including Orvis and fishing outfitters from around the world. In Kelso, in the borders of Scotland, the deer stalking fair took place, providing a good day out for deer stalkers and other rifle shooters. Thanks to Ben Rogers and Al Gabriel for sending us footage. There were seminars to watch and a range of retail stands. Talking of which, there are still a few places at the Field Sports Skill Days which are free range days across the country. Visit fchannel forward slash skills for more. And finally, two buzzards have got into a tangle and then out of it when they saw a dog. A friend of Field Sports Channel viewer, Nick Tate, found the buzzards locked by their talons, lying in undergrowth in West Sussex. He lifted them out with the aim of setting them free. They took one look at his dog, untangled themselves and flew off, apparently unharmed. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stuck in the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, at this time of year, the leaves are about to burst forth and our woodland friends are getting busy. A good looking Hampshire farm has all kinds of wildlife, and this early March sun is bringing them out into the rides and field margins. 
our air gun reviewer Jamie Chandler is out in the good weather to try out a new BSA air gun, the BSA Defiant. Look at all this sign. They obviously come in here and I'm wondering whether it's just a roost or a day roost or a, whether they'll actually sit during the evening and night. It might just be because the drilling's behind us and they've been using this to dive in on the feed, but I might watch it for a bit. While Jamie retreats to the cover of farm buildings, let's talk air guns. The compact pre-charged pneumatic or PCP bullpup style of air rifle has grown up with YouTube and its popularity is mainly down to one man, Ted Byers of the YouTube channel Ted's Holdover. He started on YouTube with the Russian Edgun Matador, shown in this film from 2012. He moved on to the FX Bobcat, which he is discussing here, and recently cast his eye at the Benjamin Bulldog 357. BSA defiantly said they would never launch a bullpup. Well, they have. It's called the Defiant. And here's Jamie giving it a try. OK, quick, follow me. There is literally 20 or 30 pigeons walking down the field feeding on the seed on the top of it from the drillings. Follow me, follow me, follow me. It's designed as a short, handy air rifle. Maybe a bit space age if you grew up in the 1950s, but if you grew up in the 1950s, you probably like space age. It's certainly good for action scenes like this. I'm still there. That is exactly what this little gun was really meant to do. Look at that. Fast, straight onto aim. And we've won, pigeon down. That bolt cycled amazingly. This biathlon bolt is so quick off the mark. Second shot ready to go, obviously didn't need it. My God, just to have that ready. Right, we should go and find him. One in the bag, absolutely delighted. Rest of the pigeons scattered and have gone for those trees over there. We're gonna try and sneak in and get one of the outlanders, one of the ones sort of closer to us. I don't have a face net or anything like that. So I'm gonna be relying on a peak and the sun to keep me in the shade. Not sure it's going to work. Stalking skills are terrible, but <laughs> see what happens. Okay, let's do this. Right, let's go. Jamie approaches the pigeons, but they are well positioned, out in the open and with many pairs of eyes. His chances are small, especially as he is less the sneak up kind of stalker and more the charge bayonets fixed type. Told you I was awful at stalking. They're off. Stuff it. But then one, Mr. Stupid Pigeon, stays behind. Either we've just been the luckiest, luckiest people, or that was the thickest pigeon. I can't work out what it was. But they all flew away from behind us, and that one, straggler, came straight round into that tree. Can't have been more than 20 yards. Simple standing shot, smack, down he goes. There is one more place for Jamie to look. You know, I reckon that these bits of maize have been carried in from the game cover just over there. I'm pretty sure that means squirrels. So I think it might be worth just sitting here, sticking it out for an hour and seeing if we can get a squirrel. He is right. A squirrel comes out, but Jamie does not get onto it in time and it spots him. Two pigeons in the bag is one more than respectable. For more about the BSA Defiant, have a look at bsaguns.co.uk. Now from English woodland to global forests and chases, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Paddy McGinty move over, it's Norman Mulvaney's goat. Norman from Irish Safaris Hunting is feral goat hunting with clients in the Emerald Isle. German stalker Mikhail Zommer is in the UK for the Muntjac stalking. This is his German language film on Walt and Wild TV. Alex Vankov is a Russian living in the UK. He is proud enough of this close encounter out stalking to send it to me. Three South of England row approach to within 10 metres. Now here's a winter holiday with a difference. Mike from MCQ Bushcraft and Wilderness Life is on cross 
cross-country skis hunting ptarmigan in the mountains of Lapland. Keeping it scandy, Norwegian hunting star Christopher Clausen puts up super short films now because he wants you to look at his pay TV channel. This one shows off the ATN Excite 4K Pro with the 5 to 20 zoom, daytime hunting for wild boar roebuck and black grouse. Tommy from Rural Pest Control Whitewell sends me this, night rabbit shooting using a Browning T-Bolt 2-2 rimfire rifle and night sight night vision. Larger pest control next, American Robert Errington from Deer Meat for Dinner puts up a thermal crossbow hunt, two massive wild boar caught clean and cooked. Plus he has a competition to win a weekend with him, say woo, details in the film. And finally a bit of a rant, I mean for goodness sake, this is what's wrong with the promotion of shooting in the UK. In this film game, chef Adam Holden visits a West Country shoot to promote the British Game Alliance and tells us why the British Game Alliance is wonderful. And until I saw this film I had no reason to doubt that the BGA is indeed wonderful. There's a tiny bit of reality 90 seconds in where they discuss how excited the dogs are, but the rest is posh people telling you what's jolly well good for you. God knows what this film cost to make when I found it two weeks after it went live, it had been watched just 200 times. Rant over, and thank you for your time. That's it for this week, I've put all these films into a playlist for you, click on the i symbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top 8, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. That's it for this week. If you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Still relatively new. You can click the likes there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube and you can scroll down to the bottom of the page, pop your email address into the constant contact box and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain is at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can have a look at the Field Sports Nation and see what it is to back us. I'll see you next week in the meantime. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye.